China has granted patent to a COVID-19 vaccine co-developed by Consino Biologics and a team of infectious disease experts led by Cheng Wei. It is a adenovirus vaccine named AD5 and CoV. The vaccine has completed its phase two clinical trial and is entering its phase three clinical trial. So what are the advantages of this candidate and will it prove effective in the phase three trial? And where does it stand in the race, in the global race, to find a COVID vaccine? To talk about this issue and more, I'm joined by Dr. Xie Feng Yu, Chairman and CEO of Cancino Biologics. That's our topic. This is Dialogue. I'm Zhou Yue. Uh, Dr. Yu, uh, thank you for agreeing to the interview. Could you please tell us the progress of your vaccine development and, and production? Sure, thank you for inviting me to this uh, program. Uh, and thanks for the recognition. And uh, since the uh, outbreak of, uh, in Wuhan, as a vaccine developer, so we are uh, immediately acting on the you know, vaccine development. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, we work through the Chinese New Year all the way up to today. Uh, I think we are we have made a significant progress uh, overall. And uh, uh, before you know uh, the phase one clinical trial started in mid March, we have done a lot of basic researches. Uh, you know, testing animals and and demonstrate the potential. Uh, uh, you know, the efficacy of our vaccine. And obviously, you know, those are safety and immunogenicity of our vaccine has been demonstrated in our phase one and also phase two clinical trials that we started in April, mid-April. Mm -hmm. uh, both of these clinical trial results was published in Lancet. Uh, we are actively pursuing the global phase three uh, efficacy trials. And uh, uh, this phase three uh, uh, efficacy trial is making a significant progress. Can you tell us where uh, the phase three uh, vaccine trial is conducted and how big is the targeted, uh, targeted audience? Yes. The phase three clinical trial, we are aiming for multiple countries, uh, range from Asia to Europe to North, uh, South and North America. Uh, really, uh, we are in discussion with um, uh, quite a few countries. And the size of the uh, phase three clinical trial is actually uh, uh, follow the recommendation from WHO. Uh, based on the disease burden, uh, where WHO estimate we need uh, roughly 30 to 40 uh, thousand subjects. In total or in one area? In total, globally, in total, uh, based on disease burden. Uh, in order to get the statistical power of the you know, efficacy analysis, so we need to allocate in those numbers in different parts of the world and really to accumulate all the data to analyze it to demonstrate how effica uh, efficacious our vaccine is. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it's a lot of work and uh, it's a quite, a, you know, a complicated process, uh, especially when we run a global clinical trial and try to in compliance with all the global quality standard uh, obviously, each country has their own regulation, and uh, all these trials uh, has also bring back to China, and uh, we have to discuss with the NMPA, our, our regulatory bodies, to make sure it also meet Chinese regulatory requirement. Mm. Are, are you uh, certain that your vaccines will pass the standard uh, tests of all the regulators around the world, not just China? Well, I mean, Nobody can say you will pass the, the test. Uh, what we can only say is we have confidence based on our previous uh, phase one and phase two clinical trial and based on our animal study, we're confident our vaccine should work. Uh, however, the, you know, the results has to be coming from the efficacy trial. Yeah. yeah. As we all know, COVID-19 is still rampaging all over the world and people are trying hard to come up with a vaccine. Yeah. Does this sense of urgency uh, have a toll on, on the development of 
a vaccine like your company? Because people are saying probably they want to cut corners, want to skip steps to get as fast as possible a vaccine available on the market? Well, that's, a, that's something we really like to discuss. Uh, I mean, fast doesn't mean a low quality. I think, uh, uh, you know, to develop vaccine, you really have to have the tools. You really have to know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I always uh, trying to put the quality uh, in the you know, top priority because vaccine used for healthy people. And we need to demonstrate the safety, you know, uh, and immunogenicity, and, and then there's the efficacy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, safety is always the first. That's why, you know, we work, uh, when we decide to start work on COVID-19 vaccine, we start work day and night. How, uh, so many of our employees stay in the labs and, you know, work uh, uh, days around, really have no, uh, no rest. Uh, all this work has to really bring the vaccine to the, you know, to all the estimation has to be confirmed in the lab mm. that we will pass our safety emergency testing. Uh, thanks for the whole system actually in China, we were able to work with many collaborators in, you know, doing the animal study in parallel. So thinking of that, when we start in, and, uh, t towards late of January, before, just right before Chinese New Year, and decide to start work on this vaccine. And we were able to make the viral seed uh, in the mid uh, February. Then we start all the animal studies in parallel from mice, uh, ferrets, uh, rats, monkeys, you know, all those study uh, results tells us, you know, we have a, uh, seems like a, a immunogenic and safe, a safe vaccine candidates. Mm -hmm. And it also have to work with the process, how the vaccine is produced. For us, we can quickly make the vaccine and, and uh, available for clinical trial. It's based on our platform technologies. We have using this viral vector platform technology for numerous vaccine development. We have the quality standard. We have the assay available for it. We have the production process pretty much work out. All of those factors just happen to be, you know, in place that allow us to speed up our development. Mm. So that's uh, really the trick, uh, how we can quickly get into human trials. And you said that uh, you have an advantage in, in, in getting a large scale manufacturing capabilities ready. Can you tell us if approved uh, by the regulators, how many vaccines can you produce in how much time? Okay, uh, actually vaccine production process itself takes time because you start from a single vial of virus seed and uh, amplify it into large scale to the thousands of liters in the bioreactors. It takes time, you know, you can't really speed up that process. It takes uh, uh, over months actually uh, to produce a batch of vaccines but you can, you know, piggyback on each other. Mm. You don't really say finish one month uh, for one batch and start another one. Basically, you kind of, you know, stagger them. Uh, for the production capacity, you know, the COVID-19 vaccine demand has never really come to the scale we actually, you know, in the past we have experienced. <laughs> so everybody rushed to build up the capacity same as uh, us, you know, with our existing capacity, certainly it will not satisfy the market needs. So you, we you mean China's market? No, 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 Global. globally. Mm -hmm. So for us, uh, we are, you know, using our current facility to produce vaccines for the clinical trials and uh, for some cases uh, in the emergency need. And we are building up a new facility that will allow us to produce over 200 million doses annually. Uh, 200 next million, million doses dose. a month? Uh, no, annually, annually, next year, yeah, next year. Uh, and we're also looking to the potential collaboration with other companies to build more capacity, say at least uh, 100 million doses annually by other facility. So all those are, will add up, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the the dosages that will hopefully satisfy the demand of the of the market. Mm. 
uh, I mean, reality is you cannot expect in by day one everybody get a vaccine. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, the market disappear right away, right? It, it takes time uh, to build the capacity. It takes time to immunize everybody. Mm. So it's, it's a process. Let's talk about your product or, or, or your candidate vaccine. A, a donor vaccine, as I correctly understand it, is a vector vaccine. Yes, right. Could you please explain what is it and why it works? Okay, so basically our vaccine is a build, it's genetic engineered into a harmless viral vector. It's, it's harmless virus. It's called anovirus type 5. This virus normally infect people you don't even notice. Mm. Okay, this is a common cold virus. And so what we did is to engineer this virus to delete some critical component that virus would not amplify when giving to human. Mm. So you will just uh, get into cells, express our antigen, let's say COVID-19 antigen, then it will die. Right? It's, it's a non-live, non-replicate virus. What we did is to identify the, the antigen from a COVID-19 virus. Uh, everybody work on it uh, It's a spike protein. So engineer this piece of uh, you know, uh, protein antigen into this viral vector to build a new virus which can express this uh, spike protein when you the va vaccine is given to human. So the vaccine will get into human cells and express it internally and present that S protein onto the cell surface or secrete into the human blood uh, stream to stimulate antibody and cellular immune response. So the advantage of this viral vector vaccine is it does providing the the, the, the mechanism to stimulate both antibody immune response and cell-mediated immune response. Mm -hmm. So it's like a two punches. Do you foresee one type of vaccine uh, winning the trophy or is going to be a combination of different kinds being used by different parts of the world? My personal feeling is going to be multiple, you know, vaccines, multiple type of vaccines. Uh, I think uh, each, each of them play a different trick, but it could all, you know, preventing infections. Uh, another question is, of course, uh, the affordability. Uh, yeah. uh, how much it will cost consumers? When we develop vaccine, uh, our goal, you, you know, the first the goal is really to preventing disease, make it available as much as we can to the public. Of course, from the business perspective, we cannot lose money, otherwise the company will bankrupt. So, but I think we should go with reasonable price. Another question is, um, what makes your vaccine candidates different from the other types which are also in the pipeline? Uh, because obviously you know there are a lot of candidates in the world, American, British, uh, German, and, and Chinese. Uh, why your vaccines can come out on, on top, if you believe that well, is the case? Well, uh, I think everybody develop a vaccine based on their strength, right? Uh, how good they are at that type, certain type of technology. But I think if you look, uh, you know, overall, we always say there are five technologies, uh, uh, platforms to develop the COVID-19. So inactivate, uh, life attenuated, and uh, viral vector, and the DNA, Which is yours. mRNA. Yes. Um, if you look at the vaccine type, all those are, this, except the DNA and the mRNA vaccine, all others already have product on the market, mm -hmm. you know, one way or another. Uh, there are advantages and disadvantages of each type of vaccines. So for subunit vaccine, there's a protein. Uh, you need adjuvant. You have to have a potent adjuvant to go with it. It takes time to really figure out and match these uh, antigens and uh, adjuvants. It may also change the forms in, in one way or another. And for live attenuated vaccines, you need actually cultivate the virus for a long time to get a non-pathogenic virus. So that's why you don't see a live attenuated 
uh, vaccine for COVID-19 because yeah. you know, it we takes too long. Takes too long. Yes, but you do see a subunit, and the mRNA is a new technology, which actually I think is an uh, important technology platform we should pay attention to. However, because it's too new, there was no really product onto the market yeah. yet. No president, so... No, yeah, right. In the end, uh, do you foresee one type of vaccine uh, winning the trophy, or is going to be a combination of different kinds being used by different parts of the world? My personal feeling is going to be a, a multiple you know, vaccines, multiple type of vaccines. Uh, I think uh, each, each of them play a, a different trick, but it could all you know, preventing infections. And, and also, people would probably ask this question, uh, which co country, w which people will use which vaccine based on which principle? What do you say to that? It's hard to say. I think it's a personal choice, and whether they prefer to you know, inactivate or, 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 or viral uh, vectors or, or MRA. It, first of all, whether it's available, and secondly, I, I think it's really, we have to look at uh, it takes time to look at overall how the, the vaccine uh, functions effectively, how long it will last, right? Mm. It, that, that's still unknown. It still need to be tested. Uh, another question is, of course, uh, the affordability. Uh, yeah. uh, how much it will cost consumers uh, and uh, vaccine takers? Uh, should the government pay half of the uh, cost and uh, on what conditions? What do you think the principle should be? Well, I think uh, President Xi made a, a very important uh, announcement. Uh, the vaccine would be the, uh, for the public, right? I think that's a very important message. And uh, when we develop vaccine, uh, our goal, you, you know, the first goal is really to preventing disease, make it available as much as we can to the public. Of course, from the business perspective, we cannot lose money, otherwise the company will bankrupt, right? Of course. Yeah, so, but I think we should go with reasonable price. Uh, well, with the demand going so high, you know, everything become more expensive. Even small vials, the glass vials, you know, it, it become shortages. And your company is preparing for that shortage? Yes, of course. Yes, we are stockpile quite a lot of <laughs> material. And it, it certainly, uh, you know, it will uh, actually, you know, uh, we have to spend a lot of money up front. Uh, it's risky, you know, in a way for business. Yeah. And because there, there are so many uncertainties. Yeah. Do you feel the pressure of competition? Because a lot of people looking at the vaccine of COVID as a race between companies and countries. Do you feel this kind of pressure? I personally don't feel the pressure of competition. I think uh, everybody needs vaccine. We have over 7 billion people. You know, for all the current available capacity, it takes years to vaccinate everyone on Earth, right? I think we have plenty of uh, space to, you know, have our, uh, um, uh, quite a few companies uh, to develop vaccine and to serve the purpose. And, and is it possible that it will become a huge business in, in the coming year because of the demand? And what does it mean for your company and also for, for a country? It could be. I mean, uh, again, it really depends on demand. Uh, but I, I know uh, our company, we have a vision to make, a, you know, a high quality, innovative vaccines at the affordable, you know, uh, cost. Uh, and that means it's a lot of pressure for us to, you know, make it affordable. Uh, the reason I ask this question is because Russia recently uh, announced that they have already used the vaccine without uh, the phase three trial. Uh, mm -hmm. It seems uh, people are in urge to get there first so that they can put their vaccines out there being used by more people. We have to keep in mind the vaccines need to be made for, you know, for large population. It's not just we can make a few vials or, or, or a million of those or, or a few, or less than even 100 million dose available. It's a, it's a long journey. Mm. You know, it's really a hard work. Uh, again, as I say, we need to make the vaccine 
effective and safe. It's, it's a lot of work need to be put in place. A another question is the time frame. Uh, I know you've said that there are several countries uh, using this as a phase three trial. Yeah. Uh, when we will see the results of the, da or the data of the phase three trial. And I was also told that some of the vaccines are being used uh, by, by our military men. Is that true? That is true. Uh, if you look at the uh, actual, uh, you know, we, we made a, you know, uh, as a uh, you know, public company, we have to disclose the major, uh, you know, event. We, uh, we made that uh, announcement uh, about a month ago, more than a month ago, I guess, end of June. And uh, we were approved uh, by the Chinese uh, military, uh, you know, regulatory bodies that uh, vaccine, uh, uh, they grant us a, a, a permission to, uh, or certificate in a way, uh, that uh, used for the military at under the emergency need. And uh, what is the scale of the usage? Uh, sorry, I cannot disclose that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but has been used for many people in the, uh, who definitely need to uh, take the vaccine, especially farm peacekeepers in, in the area that, uh, you know, really the disease is circulating. Mm. Yeah. Uh, what about the time for commercial use of this vaccine if it passed? Uh, well, we, we need to, uh, I think we need to get the phase three efficacy data uh, in order to, to be commercially used the uh, vaccine. Uh, but, you know, uh, we'll go back to the previous question about uh, emergency use. I think that that's a risk-benefit analysis. Really, when you have a immunogenic, safe, demonstrated immunogenic and safe vaccine, well, you still don't know the efficacy yet. But when the people exposed to the environment, which you know there's a disease circulating, there's a big chance to get, you know, infected. So which way you go? I think that's the, you know, the, the reason for emergency use. Uh, I think that is uh, really based on the, you know, uh, well-documented safety efficacy uh, or immunogenicity results to make that call. Uh, finally, I want your comments on the vaccine developments in the United States, which is, uh, is still uh, severely ravaged by this uh, virus, yeah. what, what do you say to those vaccine developers in the United States? Well, I mean, certainly, uh, I think uh, there are multiple companies who work on the vaccines, uh, and uh, we also see uh, the American company Moderna has uh, aggressively, uh, you know, pushing the, their, uh, you know, progress uh, into the phase three clinical trial. I hope uh, the vaccine will work. Uh, but I I'm personally don't know much about uh, th their vaccine. Uh, they haven't disclosed uh, uh, you know, their clinical data. I, I was uh, you know, involved in the WHO and r and uh, COVID-19 R&D task force. Uh, okay. I've been you know, sitting in WHO uh, you know, teleconference calls, uh, especially in the past few months, almost like uh, every week. Uh, you know, I, I think the general sense is uh, before they get into human trial, there was no uh, really animal data to back uh, up their decision. Uh, I hope their human clinical trial results demonstrate the vaccine is safe and it will do the work. Um, well, unfortunately, I haven't seen any data yet. And do you expect Cancino's vaccines or any other Chinese vaccines being used by Americans in the future? Well, I hope so. I mean, our vaccine made for all the people. I mean, it's really whether they're accepting this or they, they, they will, you know, uh, I guess this is not just a uh, scientific or medical uh, question. All right. Thank you very much for answering our questions and thank you for doing the work which is very important for people all over the world. It's my pleasure. Really uh, have a chance to talk to you and, uh, you know, it's a great uh, opportunity. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you.